Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. So some of the things that I enjoy most are tools and utilities that are helpful in the home lab. And collaborative tools are some of the most valuable assets you can have configured in your home lab or your small company. And so I value things like Jitsi Meet, Rust Desk, Remotely, Rocket Chat, and Discourse for assisting my customers as well as carry on sessions with my subscribers. So Nico is a collaborative app that uses WebRTC to stream a web browser, a desktop, or really any Linux app in a group session along with a text chat. And Nico is similar to Chasm except that it is designed for sharing, that is to have a session with multiple people collaborating on a single screen. So Nico supports all of the common browsers and can broadcast live streams via RTMP to YouTube or Twitch as well. Here I am on my Heimdall menu screen and you can see that in my home lab I have quite a number of self-hosted apps and we want to focus today on Nico. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Nico and the first thing you'll get is a login screen. So the first field of the login screen says enter your display name and like most apps this is not a username this is simply a display name. The idea behind it is that multiple people would con collaborate in a Nico session and therefore you might have Scott, David, Sam, Ralph, and so on. The password down here is one of two. It is either the user password that you pass out to all of your users or it is the admin password. So I'm going to go ahead and type in Scott as my um, as my uh, kind of tag or username, um, alias, if you will. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in admin123, which is just a throw down password that I set up for this. You're going to want to make that more secure. I do a connect and it goes ahead and logs in. I'm going to collapse this menu for right now. And basically what you're looking at is a web browser. The way that I have Nico configured right now is it's using the Brave browser. If I click in the upper left hand corner here, this will simply go to the GitHub page. If I come over here to this uh, mouse control here, it'll say lock control for users, which basically will not allow user level users, that means non-admins, to grab the screen and do anything. They're simply read only. And when I click on that, we get a red icon and when users log in, they will not have the option to control the screen. Likewise, I also have the ability to lock the room and that locks it for all users, only allowing admins to see what's going on. And then I have this menu over here, which is the hamburger menu. The hamburger menu has both chat and settings. The chat would be anybody in the chat and people can collaborate here and type messages and the messages will show up according to the name that they logged in with. The settings screen lets you make a number of settings as well as allowing you to log out of the system. Going back here, we have a full screen control and we also have another control which will let you change the resolution of the browser. So I'm gonna go ahead and go full screen. The idea behind going full screen on this um, session is so that you don't confuse your host browser configuration with the browser configuration in this particular environment. So as an example, since I'm on my local network, but this browser is really running in Nico, which happens to be a browser running inside of a Docker container. It is on my local network, so I can go ahead and type in things on my local network and be able to connect to them. 
So at this point in time, I just realized that I did not enable my screen. So I have to come out of this momentarily, come out of full screen. And I forgot to talk about these controls at the bottom. So over here is kind of a help screen. Over here it says you're logged in as an admin. And over here is your, your language. And then we have a control for both a request control for keyboard or uh, turn on the um, controls. So basically if I click the keyboard, it basically says you took the controls. So now I have control of the screen and I also have a volume control of how loud the audio is coming back through the web browser. So if you played a video for everyone, everyone in the session would of course be able to hear the video. Since this instance of the Brave browser running in Nico is actually running inside of a Docker container, I can connect to anything that's on my main LAN. So for example, if I were to go up here and type in 172.16.0.1, that would be the local address of my router, which is my UDM Pro. And you can see here that it responds. Likewise, I can go to things on the internet, such as google.com. So as it turns out, you can't really gain control of everything through having the full screen browser. So I'm going to come back to the interface where I'm just in a tab on the browser. And I'm going to go over here and hit the hamburger menu. And you can see it opens the chat session. And my local user, the admin that's logged in, is Scott. And that's why it's the one that's highlighted. And then I typed in hello, which of course I misspelled a little bit. And then I have another user logged in from another browser tab. And I simply gave him the name test user. And test user entered the test password and logged in and went ahead and sent a message also. So of course we could have eight or 10 users out here all using this at the same time. So in the getting started page, they point out a whole bunch of different tags. If you go to the latest tag, it will use the Firefox browser. And also you can specify Firefox as your browser. You can also specify Chromium. They have Google Chrome and they have something called ungoogled Chromium, which they explain. They have the Microsoft Edge browser for Linux and they have the Brave browser, which is what I was using. They have the Vivaldi browser, the Opera browser, and even a Tor browser. And then you have Remina for your remote desktop connections. So you could launch a Remina container and you could be doing RDP and you might RDP to a Windows virtual machine as an example, and then be sharing that Windows virtual machine with multiple users as they watch something during a demonstration. You can also, uh, there is a VLC container, and then there is an XFCE desktop container, and then the base container is designed to build your own things on. The main GitHub page for Nico describes Nico as a self-hosted virtual browser that runs in Docker and uses WebRTC. And it's a tool that allows you to run a fully functional browser in a virtual environment. And it gives you the ability to access the internet securely and privately, basically because each session is destructive and isolated from your main machine. At the same point in time, it's really not for that in general. It's really designed to have a collaborative session amongst a group of users where you carry on a real-time chat. The Docker page for Nico shows that this application is regularly maintained. As a matter of fact, as of this presentation here on October the 5th of 2023, it says that it was last updated three days ago. So as we scroll down the page on the Docker page, they talk about the new features that they've added to it and a lot of the capabilities as well as some of the bug fixes.
So um, this documentation is really great uh, to kind of keep you an idea of what it is they do. They also give samples of the Docker Composes for Firefox, for Chromium, for VLC, and even for a Raspberry Pi. The program also apparently has uh, or has upcoming support for mobile and that's supposed to include iOS and Android as well. So how exactly do we run Nico? Well first of all it's a Docker application and I have a Docker Compose file. In my particular case I created a LexD container and if you're new to the channel I discuss LexD containers and LexD virtual machines all the time. I have probably in excess of 75 videos talking all about them. So in this particular case, this is a LexD container with Docker nested inside of it. And then I installed Docker Compose. And in the show notes, I'll give an example of a command that I use to create the LexD container and also the commands that I use to install Docker and Docker Compose. So the Docker Compose YAML file will also be documented in the show notes. And here's a simple example of the file I've been using here that was using the Brave browser. So we just have services, Nico, the image here is colon brave. You saw examples of the other images for Firefox and Chromium and Google. I have a restart and less stopped. Um, the shim size is set to two gigabytes. I'm not sure um, what, uh, how large that needs to be, but that's the default. Um, the port numbers. So inside the container, it uses port 8080. You can't change that. Since I have a dedicated LexD container, I change that to port 80 outside of the container. And then by default, they use UDP ports 52,000 to 52,100. And you should set port forwards on your router for whichever ports that you designate here left of the colon because they're required for the web RTC sessions for your users and those are UDP ports. So the Firefox browser does not require this cap add sys admin these two lines. However, I've noticed that all of the Chrome derived browsers do require that. Then you have a default screen size. In this case, it's 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. And you specify a user password. I guess the idea is you should probably pick a fairly complex user password and you would provide that to all of your users so that they can come into a particular session and then presumably you would change that password after that session. Then you have a user password and I would think that it needs to be a little bit more complex, something you might want to store over in the Bitwarden as an example password manager and then this uh, there seems to be some conflicting uh, documentation that talks about this uh, Nico EPR which seems to align with these um, UDP ports required for web RTC but then it goes on to say that if you use Nico Isolite which is their recommended parameter if that's set to one they seem to say that it generally uses only one UDP port. However, the documentation also says define this port range. In any case, I found out that the file as configured works fine for me. So if you're editing this, you're going to do a control O and a enter to save the file out and a control X to exit the editor. And you're going to do a docker space compose up space dash d and it will go ahead and start the container in my particular case the container was already pulled down and was already running another really interesting example is to go ahead and use the remina setting here 
And if you use Remina, you can pass the environment variable for what protocol you want to use. And Remina supports VNC, RDP, or Spice. And then you pass your username, your password, the server address, and the port number. So in order to accomplish that configuration, I come back into my Docker Compose file and I change this tag here from Brave over to Remina. And then I comment out these two lines here that I'd mentioned earlier. And then I add a line for the Remina URL, which includes RDP, which is the protocol I want to use. I put in my username, I put in my password, and then I put in the address of my server, and finally port 3389, since that is the default port for RDP. And in my particular case, I'm going to not save that file out, but I would save that file out normally and do a docker compose up dash D. Now when I go back to my Nico screen and I type in my Scott username and then the password, I'll go ahead and enter my admin password and I'll click connect and it immediately connects to my Windows environment. I'll go ahead and make that full screen and you can see that we have an RDP session here off to the Windows. Of course, one of the things I forgot to do is go down here and enable my keyboard. And then I'll go ahead and make it go full screen. And you can see here that I have an RDP connection to my Windows desktop and I'm able to control it. So ideally, I'd want to be out of full screen mode and I'd want to come over here and turn on the chat window. And so as I'm performing things in Windows, the idea that I might have, say, 10 people watching this particular session in Windows through this Nico sharing program is where it adds value in assisting users or running a class. So in summary, Nico is the Japanese word for cat. And my cat, Pebbles, thought that this was a great collaborative app, and so she meowed in support of this presentation. And as anyone knows who owns a cat, it's not really possible to say no. So Nico works over reverse proxy, but it does require UDP ports 52,000 to 52,099 for WebRTC. You can vary those port numbers, but it works best having a range of UDP ports to support multiple users connecting and various streams. So Nico supports group browser session with text chat. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.